So somewhat recently, Rachel Maxey made a video asking if there was enough fabric in a pillowcase to make it useful for sewing clothes. The answer was yes. Now, while I definitely don't lack for a fabric stash, I still thought it looked like it would be a fun little project to try to make something from pillowcases. And my stash does happen to include a set of vintage pillowcases that someone very kindly gave me. Thanks. So, since they had originally belonged to a craft person, they were already partially disassembled. And recently I went ahead and picked out the stitching for the hem on the open side. And this is the tag that was there. It is Canon Royal Family No Iron Stay Fresh Per Kale. 50% cotton, 50% polyester. Standard size 42 inches by 36 inches, size before hemming. So that 42 inches by 36 inches means that each pillowcase is right at a yard of fabric. So that's two inches, or two yards, non-contiguous total, which is a decent amount to play with. This is the print in question. It is directional, and I'm holding it upside down. The sunflowers are the big giveaway for the directional part. You can see now the sunflowers are at the top of the stems. So when it comes to cutting things out, I'm going to have to pay attention to that directional aspect of the print. And also there are like little folds where that hem was for decades. And it is threadbare. I can see almost holes in it from the other side as the light shines through. So I'll have to avoid that. I know there's a big stain. So yeah, things to avoid when using these pillowcases. Now the pattern I'm going to use is McCall's 5675 from 1977. I have made this several times before, more or less. I've made this view, view C, with the tiny little bias tie collar. I don't think I'll be able to make that one from this pattern because bias does use up so much fabric. I'm going to go hope that I can make view B with the big bow, but if I can't do that, then I might do A with its little collars, and I might not even do the ties, depends on how much fabric I have, of course. I might do like a button loop closing or something, but I'm hoping for B. And I am not quite down to a pattern 12 again, pattern size 12. So I made this shirt, a shirt from this pattern a few weeks ago, and I added a little bit on each side of the fold center because the way this gathers, the way this compensates for the bust, instead of having a dart, it has gathering at the neckline. So I just added a little bit wider up there and just gathered that like in just a little bit more and it made no difference to the way it looked and it fit fine. So that's what I'm going to be doing to lazily grade this pattern up from a 12 to a 14. And okay, I think I have babbled everything that I need to get you ready for what I'm going to do. So it's time to wrestle with the ironing board and my temporary cardboard work surface and go start cutting Another little thing that I forgot to mention with this pattern is that not only is this the only view I've made, but I've never made this view with sleeves this long ever. I have hacked a little shorter bell sleeve that I've used with it, and I've also just made the sleeve short. So again, because we are working with such a limited amount of fabric, it's going to have short sleeve. I think I will have enough for the bell sleeves. Um, we will see. I am not just folding this down the middle because, like I said, there is wear from it being folded there for decades. So my center front will either be over here or over here. Let me go ahead and fold it this way. Oh, yes. I recently put some um, contact paper on my cardboard work surface. And while it is a nice, lovely uh, finish to look at, especially since that cardboard had been around for so long that it was in rough shape, 
there is no friction left on this and everything just slips off. So that's fun. All right. I'm going to put a few more things on for weight. Oh, another thing that I'm going to do to save length is this is supposed to be a fairly long shirt. It's long enough to tuck in or to cover a lot of your hip. I'm going to make it a lot shorter. Partly, again, to save fabric. Oh, there's a lot there. Um, partly because I don't enjoy sewing this curve. So, I believe I'm just going to cut off where that curve starts. I think that's what I used to do. Also, since I believe that is marked on both sides of the pattern, it makes it easier. Okay, now I want to watch where it was hemmed. Okay, it was hemmed up there, so, so I want to avoid getting around the hem. So, down here. And then uh, I think I only need to add one inch on either side, one inch total, which is a half inch on either side of the seam, but I'm going to go ahead and be generous and add one inch on each side of the seam, which will make it two inches larger than the fabric pattern is given. Which should make it plenty larger. All right. Now I'm not going to pin. I have recently realized that I can use my giant stash of knot fabric scissors as pattern weights. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, it is a little easier to work around corners with pins because you hook the whole thing up. But, you know, pinning is annoying. And I know technically you're supposed to use pattern weights because they're less likely to make things shift and to distort. And probably need something smaller than scissors to use for pattern weights so they can be more precise. But I'm not sure if I have properly conveyed that I am not the most precise sewing kind of person. But things still work out pretty well. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and put a slight curve bottom here. Maybe I should say rough curve, not a slight curve. That'll work out in this seat. Alright, um, I'm going to stick a pin in where the front slit will come to, but I'm going to actually mark it more thoroughly on the facing that you sew to it. And I believe that is all I need. I marked where the sleeve dot is. I marked where that is. Alright, so that's all I need to do for the front. One of the reasons I chose this pattern is because it's fairly quick both to cut, especially when I'm not dealing with the bias, and to sew. And yes, I am very um, persnickety about folding my patterns back up along their original pattern fold lines. See, the width of this getting some of the fold was unavoidable, so there is some fold visible, but it's going to be off-center and it shouldn't be too obvious once it's sewn. I mean, technically, I don't even need to add width to the back since I added it to the front and most of my, um, most of my own excessive width is at the front. But I'm going to go ahead. See-through rulers are wonderful. If you've never used a see-through ruler, you don't know what you're missing. I'm probably putting the curve at the bottom wrong. Gotta figure out where sleeves are gonna be cut out of. 
and then I'll see about if I have enough for the tie, or just the collar. I realize this could get a little confusing because normally when you just fold stuff in half, I'm just staying there. Fold stuff in half and go, you don't have to worry about flipping stuff around to be aligned. Like if I had thought about it, I would have cut the um, back from the other side of the pillowcase so that it has something fairly symmetrical here. But I didn't think about it. So I often say one of my favorite things in terms of crafts is to work with what I have and figure out how to make it work. So if I were going out and buying pillowcases exclusively and specifically for this project, I probably would not come anywhere near this one. Stains and white and faded and all that, but I'm going to make this work. Okay, I need sleeves. Can I get my bell sleeves made out of this or do I need to do just little normal short sleeves. I'm hoping I'm going to do the bell sleeves. Looks like I can. Okay, we will see if there is enough fabric left to cut sleeve bands for this. If not, I can use elastic. I would rather use sleeve bands. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'd say I have enough for the sleeve bands and probably even on the bias, but the next most important thing I need to cut out is the facing for that front opening. Now, two, they don't have to be perfectly on bias, sleeve bands. They can just be a little bit on bias. Just any amount of the give that bias creates will make these sleeve bands more comfortable. It's actually more of this left than I thought there would be. Alright, where's my one? Homemade sleep and pattern piece. Interfacing is one of those things that seems ridiculous. And you question why you even need it, but it does make things way much nicer. It gives a little more body to openings. All right, and like I said, I mark the opening on here, and I just do it by actually cutting the center where the opening is. Which I might have, I'm trying not to put my arm in the way, but I probably is. All right, so time to clean up. Uh, I'll probably put my camera on the charger for a while. And, uh, I know I also need to put white or ivory thread in my sewing machine, unless I want to use some other color. But I need to change my sewing machine thread. I probably should be good and change my serger thread to all white. Right now it's white and black and navy. And uh, it's like I said, I don't really deal with white a lot. So I'll do all that stuff off camera and then we'll start sewing. Well, I was ready to change my serger thread and everything, but I discovered that the only cone of white serger thread I have is the one cone that's in my machine right now. So I am gonna do this right. Even if I had any other pale serger threads, I would use it. I have no other pale serger thread. I mean, I have red, I have more red serger thread than anything. But. So tomorrow, hopefully, I will get white serger thread and then I will commence with assembly. If you've seen any of my previous sewing videos, you've seen how I have the tendency to do loads of edits to show you every seam being sewn. And you know what? I dreaded editing the sewing part of this video so much that I didn't touch it for two months. And then the other day I realized that I don't need to edit it like that. Especially for this project, because all the weirdness of this project was in the cutting out phase, because I was dealing with the limitations of the pillowcases. And since this is more of a project diary than a tutorial, well, you don't need to see every last step. 
So, let's cut from the sewing footage you're looking at now directly to the finished shirt. So, here's Chip. Here's the shirt. And, um, here's what I already made to wear with it. So, I think the weather will be um, cool enough tomorrow morning that I can go outside and make a silly video of me prancing around in it. <laughs>